Receiving. Hello, modelers. Uh, we've got something a bit different today. I've converted this OS Gemini 300 engine, 50cc glow engine, to petrol. And for this conversion, I've used the Morris Mini Motors conversion. Morris Mini Motors in the UK supplied carburetor manifold, ignition system all on the front. Quite a good bit of equipment this, uh, very nice, very nice engine. Unfortunately the engine is no longer manufactured by OS but we're hoping with this video and the test write-up that I do that the uh, Japanese company might consider putting out the engine again in a spark ignition. 50cc horizontal opposed engine is a very popular size. But we'll see how it goes. Let's go and see how it runs. Okay, we're all set up for a uh, test run now. I've got a 20 by 10 APC propeller fitted. My uh, ever popular uh, filter in the back there, you can see that's the quick fire filter. Make sure that you've filtered your fuel really well for these engines. And uh, got a tank full of fuel here. I'm using 20 to 1 Deluxe power model 2TS oil. Everything's ready to go, ready for the first flick, but just before we do, there are a few precautions with this engine. So we're going to go back to the workshop for a moment, and I'm going to show you a few little pointers. You must be very careful. Our very first consideration is looking inside the engine. You have to do this unless you know the engine is a new one. If you've had the engine for some time, maybe you bought it second hand, maybe you bought it as a deceased estate. Like a lot of these engines, bought a long time ago, put in the cupboard to use later. If it's an early engine, one of the very first ones that they produced, it will have aluminium alloy con rods. These are the rods. Now, these rods are an absolute failure, as you can see, this is what happens if you run the engine and it requires a total rebuild if it doesn't do other damage. You can identify the rods quite readily by the, the style. There's an OS here on the rod as you can see. Aluminium alloy. These are the replacement bronze rods. Now you can see quite a difference. There's nothing on the shank. These are fully machined bronze rods, a replacement from any OS engine outlet. Put these in your engine and they're going to last for as long as you've got the engine, believe me. They're a very, very good rod. But whatever you do, don't run the engine without checking if you're not sure. Okay, here's the uh, Morris manifold as supplied and the O-ring which you can see is 10 mil diameter, which is always the inside measurement, and the section is 1.5 mil. Freely available metric O-ring, but if you're careful, you can prise the O-rings out of your engine in the existing manifold. Now, as you see there, I've got a dental pick. You probably won't get one of those, but something similar. That little beastie there. As you can see, this is a thing that the dentist jam in your teeth. Very good for getting O-rings out. Now, that comes out and obviously it fits in here in the manifold. A little bit of Vaseline in the groove, O-rings both sides. Must be done, otherwise you're never going to tune the engine. This is the carburetor and manifold as supplied by Morris Mini Motors. Quite a nice piece of equipment actually. The uh, the manifold is CNC machined, beautifully uh, finished, uh, anodized red with uh, the engravings. And as you see, it will fit the FT300, or if you've got one of the earlier ones, the FT240. Everything is ready to go. As I said before, you've got to put the O-rings in. On the side of it, there's a very, very nice linkage set up here, which you can adjust to suit your requirements for your throttle connection. Other than that, nothing much else other than putting the two screws in at the back there. 
and mounting it on the engine. Now we'll have a look at the uh, ignition system that's supplied now. This is your CDI ignition conversion as supplied. The uh, CDI unit twin outlet obviously is uh, the ever popular and uh, very reliable Rexel unit. The braided cables on the high tension lead are your earth contact. Um, never turn the engine over without a plug in the socket without uh, it being connected. You get uh, obviously the two spark plugs uh, supplied and the two rings, very very nice piece of equipment. This is the Hall Effect sensor ring that clamps on the front housing of the engine and this one here is the ring that has the magnet in it. That's the one that activates or excites the sensor. Pretty simple sort of a setup. Uh, worth uh, having a look at his website um, showing you uh, how he sets it up and does the timing but it's pretty straightforward 30 degrees before top dead center and uh, it makes quite a bit of a difference to the engine at the very least a lot less cost in running worth considering right moving on now I th did I mention that they were a tight fit if I didn't I'm telling you again those induction tubes are a very 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 tight fit in the o-rings in that manifold the gullies in the manifold could be just a little bit deeper you'll need a fair bit of Vaseline and a fair bit of effort to push them in however good fit no air leaks all mounted nicely everything fits nicely we're moving on to the ignition now I've got the Hall effect sensor ring mounted quite a simple job to do that two uh, grub screws to hold it in position. The magnet ring at this stage is still loose and we're ready for timing the ignition. We've got the timing wheel ready. We'll set top dead centre, take it back 30 degrees, put a sensor on this which I'll show you later to tell us when the magnet actually activates the Hall effect sensor. Generally it's right on the start of the sensor and the start of the magnet. So we'll come back to that one later and we're getting very close to running the engine. After setting top dead centre with the dial test gauge as we saw before I then registered that position on the engine with this piston stop tool. That held it at top dead centre while I fitted the timing wheel which we saw a little while ago and set the engine then at 30 degrees before top dead center. Once I had it set there I used this piston stop tool down to hold the piston in that position because I was going to fit this wheel here which has got the magnet in it to set the position for the timing on the Hall effect sensor. Once I had that wheel on loose it was a matter of turning it around until such time as the light went and you can hear the buzzer on the sensor that picks up when the magnet is under the Hall effect sensor. This is quite an accurate system. I know now that my engine is set at 30 degrees before top dead center with the magnet underneath the Hall effect sensor. Almost time to run it. Coming up soon. Sharp eyed modelers will uh, see if you've had any experience with these engines that I'm actually running it inverted. That hump there, that's the camshaft, that generally goes down the bottom and the carburetor is underneath. And you can see that I've got the exhaust staggered out, they generally point backwards. The reason I've got uh, the uh, engine set up like this is to allow me to observe the carburetor, the fuel pouring into the throat of it which is uh, a good indicator of how your tuning is going and easy access for tuning um, a little bit of a touch here and there to get it all set up right it doesn't worry these engines to be running inverted there's plenty of oil getting to the camshaft uh, not a problem at all